everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. It is Class of Friday during Cobra Convergence 6. So we're looking at Cobra 6-inch classified series figures. This time we are looking at the Cobra Viper in two forms. We are looking at the Target Exclusive Special Mission Cobra Island Viper and the Python Patrol Viper. Full disclosure, the Python Patrol Viper was sent to me by Hasbro. I did not purchase it, but I thought it would be a good idea to look at these two together. Looking at the standard Cobra Viper package, First, we have the window pane showing the figure and the accessories. We have the G.I. Joe Classified Series logo and the Special Mission Cobra Island logo. This is the Cobra Viper. We have some artwork here on the front and the side showing the Viper. Pretty good. I do like this artwork. And we have multiple Vipers on the side encouraging you to army build this figure. This is number 22 in the Classified Series. On the back of the box, we have the Cobra Island artwork that we've seen on other figures in this this series and on the other side we have these symbols which represent his specialties this is sergeant slaughter's boot which they found lodged in a cobra viper's posterior regions this is a picket fence turned on its side this is the emblem of the all valley karate tournament and this means he is sleepy looking at the packaging for the python patrol viper it's basically the same as the other one there's the window pane showing the figure and the accessories there's the python patrol logo all of this is the same it's still called the Cobra Viper. It's not called the Python Patrol Viper or the Python Viper. No name change. It has the same artwork. The only difference is a color palette swap. I take that back. They are cropped very slightly differently, but not so different that you'd notice. This is number 42 in the classified series. Same artwork on the back and the same specialties on the side. Let's take these figures out of their boxes and take a look at them. Here are the two Vipers out of the packaging. These figures are almost exactly the same other than the colors. Some of the accessories are just straight reissues with no change. The standard Viper does have one accessory the Python Patrol Viper does not have. The standard Viper has this scarf. The Special Mission Cobra Island Viper is based on the Cobra Viper version 1 from 1986, and the Python Patrol Cobra Viper is based on the Viper version 2 from 1989. The Vintage Python Patrol Viper was a recolored reissue of the version 1 Viper and they have followed that tradition with the classified series just recoloring the first issue of their Viper and as you can see they stuck pretty closely to the vintage colors there are some differences so we'll take a look at them let's take a look at the Viper's accessories and we'll start with these goggles these goggles are in black they are in soft plastic they fit over the helmet they have glossy but not transparent goggles they can be removed it's a tight fit so if you don't get them firmly enough on the helmet they do have a tendency to fall off. The next accessory is this scarf, which is removable. I am undecided on whether I like this scarf. It's not a necessary piece, but I don't really like the exposed neck, so the scarf covers that. He has a backpack. The backpack is somewhat inspired by the vintage backpack. It is mostly black, and it has a fair number of utilities and pockets on it, but the classified backpack has multiple paint applications. It has pockets on the sides, and the back with some buckles. It has red smoke grenades and it has this blue panel with a red cobra emblem and it has a coiled rope. All really good details. You can remove that backpack but I have to say I had a really hard time getting this on the figure because the hole in the back of the vest does not line up very well with the hole in the back of the figure. I had to push up really hard on that vest to line up those holes for the peg on the backpack and I should not have to do that. It wasn't so much a problem on the other figure though that one worked much better he has an assault rifle in black plastic it may take some inspiration from the assault rifle on the version one figure but not a lot it's going in a different direction you can remove the assault rifle it can be a little bit of a challenge to get the assault rifle in the hand because of this closed loop that you have to fit the thumb in this rifle is very modern looking it's nice it's got a lot of detail it has this what i guess is a scope here on top it has a vented shroud over over the barrel and there is a hole in the barrel so you can add some blast effects if you want to it has a foregrip 
and the magazine is removable, but the magazine actually clips in. It doesn't just friction in, so it's very solid in there. Rounding out the removable accessories, he includes a pistol that fits in a holster on the right leg, and it can be removed. Let's look at the articulation on these figures. They both have the same articulation, and it's pretty standard classified figure articulation, which is generally pretty good. His head is on a ball joint, and he has a swivel at the neck, so there's great range of motion on the head, all the way around, up and down, side to side, really great movement on the head. He has butterfly joints at the shoulders, which are pretty tight, but they can be moved on this figure. He can move his arm up at the shoulder, about so far, and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He has a swivel at the bicep. He has double jointed elbows. He has a swivel on the left wrist. And on the right wrist, he has both a swivel and an in and out hinge. He has a large hinge at the rib cage, which is standard for classified figures, but he has this vest piece which covers that. It does cover the unsightly chest cut, but it also limits the ab crunch. He's still got good range of motion at the waist. At the hip, he has a leg split and forward and slightly backward motion of the leg at the hip. He has a cut at the thigh for a twist. He has double jointed knees. He has a twist at the boot cut, and he has hinged and rocker ankles. Let's look at the sculpt design and color of these figures, and on this standard Viper, much like the version 1, he has this blue helmet with the silver faceplate. In addition to that, he has some spots of red and gray in the back, and mine has a little spot of sloppy paint. He has this black tactical vest that wraps around the torso. It has some red stripes on the back and red straps over the shoulders. There are also some red straps and buckles on the front, some red grenades attached to the front, and a red cobra emblem on the right side upper chest. There is some kind of device showing protruding out of the pouch here on the front. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Overall, this vest does a pretty good job of of mimicking but updating the tactical vest on the version 1 figure. It looks pretty good. It does hinder the articulation, but it looks better. That tactical vest also has an attached belt piece with pouches and a red cobra emblem belt buckle. Overall, this looks good. Under that vest, he has a red undershirt and a blue uniform shirt and long blue sleeves on the arms. This is a little departure from the version 1 figure, which had rolled up sleeves on the arms so you can see some of the flesh tone under the shirt. He also has black forearm guards with red padding on the outside of those forearm guards and black gloves. Around his left wrist, he seems to have a watch that is partially covered by his forearm armor. I see a little bit of flesh tone under that forearm armor, so in theory, maybe if you could remove these pieces, he would have bare arms under that. The lower half of the figure has much of the same colors as the version 1 figures with with a blue uniform and these red padded panels on the outside and inside of the leg. Kind of an odd choice with these panels on the classified figure. These red panels were a little more clear on the version 1 figure. On the version 1 figure you had red stripes down the outside leg interrupted by these blue pockets. Then you had red stripes all the way down the inside leg down to the boot. On the classified figure, you have the red panels on the upper part of the outside leg, but not on the lower part. And on the inside leg, you just have it here on the inner thigh, and it stops right at the articulation cut at the thigh and does not go all the way down to the boot. He has black knee pads. Those look really good. He has tall black boots mimicking the version 1 figure. And those boots have this padded ridge pattern all the way down the front of the boot and the top of the foot. Let's turn our attention to the Python Patrol Viper, starting with the accessories. As mentioned before, no scarf on this guy. I do not love the exposed neck, but the scarf also covers some of the tactical vest, so it's a wash. Like the other guy, this one also has goggles on the helmet in black flexible plastic. This one has red lenses instead of the glossy black lenses, and that can be removed. He has a backpack in the same mold as the other one with some slightly different paint. He has a red Cobra emblem 
problem and the coiled rope and yellow smoke grenades. You may have a problem with the yellow, but I suppose if you accept the red, the yellow is at much worse. This is Python Patrol we're talking about, you know, stealthy. It was much easier for me to get this backpack on the Python Patrol figure than on the standard Viper. The holes in the back and the vest line up much better. He has the black assault rifle and it may be exactly the same as the other one. Uh, this one has some smudges on it, but that's from my fingers. To my eye, they look very close to the same. As with the other one, you can remove this from his hand. The design makes it difficult to get in his hand, but you can take it out and the assault rifle seems to have all the same details. Again, it looks like the same color, and it does have that removable magazine that clips in so it stays in quite firmly. Rounding out the removable accessories, we have the same black pistol and the same black holster on the right side. The articulation on these two figures is the same, so I won't go into that. So let's look at the color changes. These colors closely mimic the colors of the vintage Python Patrol Viper with a black helmet, and a red faceplate, but some additional yellow on the helmet and gray in the back. He has the exposed neck and he has a black undershirt and a gray uniform shirt. And over that, he has the tactical vest. It's the same mold as the other figure, but the colors are different. It is in a base dark gray plastic with a light gray panel on the upper right side and a red cobra emblem on the upper right side. Then there is another lighter gray panel along the back. He has yellow straps over the shoulders. He has black grenades on the chest and a black magazine for his assault rifle. He has those pouches in dark gray and that device that's sticking out of the pouch is picked out in black plastic on this so it's a bit more obvious but I still don't know exactly what it's supposed to be. That belt that is attached to the vest is in yellow. That's a yellow paint application all over on the pouches and the belt buckle and another spot of errant paint on the vest. His arms are in dark gray with a light gray lattice pattern. This is for the stealthy Python Patrol uniforms, and this mimics the lattice pattern on the vintage figure, but in much finer detail. You can just do more at this scale than you could on a three and three quarter inch figure. The forearm armor is now all black with no paint applications, and he still has those black gloves. At least he doesn't have flesh colored straps like on the vintage figure. Figure, that looks way better. The legs are in gray with pouches on the front and the side of the legs and yellow padded panels on the upper hips and on the inside legs. Just with the other figure we have black knee pads and tall black boots with that ridged armor pattern on the front of the boots and on the top of the feet. I'm glad to get some vipers. I love me some vipers, you know that, and I think they did a pretty good job of capturing the general feel of the vintage figures while taking advantage of the larger scale and what you can do with the six inch figure that you just can't do on a three and three quarter inch figure. I feel the same about these classified vipers as I do about the vintage figures. I think the standard viper looks pretty good. I think the colors are great. The blue, the red, and the black are very cobra-like. Python Patrol has the same issue Python Patrol had in the late 80s. I don't think I will ever like the Python Patrol colors as much as the standard issue cobras. Having said that, the Python Patrol Viper is probably the least bad of those options. It has a few things going for it with the gray and the black and the red. Although I'm happy to have the Python Patrol Viper, if I were to arm rebuild either of these, it would definitely be the standard issue. That was my review of the Special Mission Cobra Island Cobra Viper and the Python Patrol Cobra Viper. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're enjoying Cobra Conversion 6 this year. Check hcc788.com for a full calendar of presenters, and don't forget you can also participate in Cobra Convergence. Instructions are at hcc788.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and share this video. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have that website, hcc788.com. If you'd like to support the channel, Patreon is a great way to do it. You can get your name in videos like the names you see scrolling on the screen right now. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with more Cobra videos for the rest of July, and remember, only Cobra is Cobra. Cobra.